In this video lecture, we are going to be discussing geometric sequences. So what is a geometric sequence? A geometric sequence is any sequence that has a common ratio between consecutive terms. So firstly, let's inspect what do we mean when we say ratio. So let's consider an arbitrary sequence. Suppose that I'd given you terms T1, T2, and T3. Right, so these are the first three terms in a sequence. Then by a ratio between consecutive terms, if you consider the first two terms, they are consecutive. We mean the following. T2 divided by T1. So that is the ratio between the first pair of terms. Similarly, by looking at the next pair, T2 and T3, the ratio between them is T3 divided by T2. And if I had a fourth term listed, then once again in this fashion, considering the ratio by the next pair of terms T3 and T4, I am simply referring to T4 divided by T3. So these are the ratios. When these ratios are all equal to one another, and let's say they're all equal to some number r, then we refer to this as a common ratio. So that's what we mean when we say a sequence has a common ratio r between consecutive terms. So if we have a geometric sequence satisfying this property, then we, have, we can state the following in general. So in general, essentially what's happening is that the common ratio can be determined by taking the nth term in the sequence and dividing it by the nth minus first term, meaning Tn divided by Tn minus 1. Right, and let's suppose that you were working with a geometric sequence and you needed to determine um, what was, for example, the 17th term in the sequence. In that case, we have a general formula to determine the nth term Tn. So for a geometric sequence, Tn is equal to A times R raised to the power n minus 1, where of course n equals to 1, 2, 3, and so on, meaning all natural numbers starting from 1. So what do each of these terms in this formula represent? As before, in the case of arithmetic sequences, A refers to the first term in the sequence. So A denotes the first term. And R denotes, as I had defined above, the common ratio. So this denotes the common ratio. Right, so now that we have this formula at our disposal, we now understand what it means for a sequence to be a geometric one. Let's consider the following example. So suppose I had given you the following sequence. You have terms 1, 2 over 3, and 4 over 9. And the sequence continues in the pattern determined by these three terms. So let's inspect. Let's first check, is this sequence a geometric sequence? Meaning we now have to find out what are the ratio, what is the, the ratios between consecutive terms. So let's consider the first two terms. What is 2 over 3 divided by 1? It is 2 over 3. Let's consider the next two terms. So in order to determine this ratio, we need 4 over 9 divided by 2 over 3. So I can just invert and multiply. So notice when we're multiplying here, I'm left with the following. Also, 2 over 3. So that means that 4 over 9 divided by 2 over 3 is also 2 over 3. So it's clear that we have a common ratio. So that means R in this sequence is 2 over 3. So let's determine the general formula for the nth term. We have that the first term is equal to 1. So therefore, Tn, which equals to A times R raised to the power n minus 1, now equals to 1 being multiplied to the ratio of 2 over 3 raised to the power n minus 1. And of course, we can then rewrite this as 2 thirds raised to the power n minus 1. Now let's suppose that I 
ask you to determine the seventh term. So that is question two, T7. How would you determine that? N equals to seven. So all you'd have to do is substitute in N equals to seven into your original formula. So looking at our formula, that means taking two thirds raised to the power seven minus one, which is two thirds raised to the power six. And you could e either leave it like that or simplify a bit further by then um, distributing that exponent 6 into the numerator and the denominator. So these were very basic applications of this formula that I had mentioned. Now what if I tested you in reverse, meaning I had given you a number and I tell you that it's from the above geometric sequence and I want to know which term is it in the sequence, meaning let's suppose that I'd ask you what is or let's say what term rather what term is the number and let's consider the number 32 over 243 so what i'm telling you is that this number 32 divided by 243 is a term in the above original sequence but i want to know exactly where in this list will i find it so this is the same as asking if Tn equals to 32 divided by 243, then what is n? And that is what we are now solving for. So let's answer this question. All right. So remember, we have our general formula Tn. So let's use our general formula. We have that Tn is two-thirds raised to the power n minus 1 and this is now equal to 32 divided by 243 right so we are now solving for n so observe what we have we have an exponential expression equal to some constant on the right hand side and we are solving for the variable in the exponent so when you're solving for your variable in the exponent before you try to do something fancy such as perhaps using logarithms, your first strategy should be to consider if you can rewrite this constant as an exponential expression like that one. Meaning, can I rewrite 32 divided by 243 as base 2 thirds raised to some exponent? And if you just investigate this, uh, investigate this a bit further, you will observe that you can because 32 is actually 2 raised to the power 5 and 243 is actually 3 raised to the power 5 so we have that 2 thirds raised to the power n minus 1 is 2 to the power 5 divided by 3 to the power 5 but notice that I can now rewrite this using properties of exponents as 2 thirds raised to the power 5 so that means that 2 thirds to the power n minus 1 is now equal to 2 thirds raised to the power 5. So I have an exponential expression equal to an exponential expression and the bases are the same. Whenever the bases are the same then the exponents are equal. So this now implies that n minus 1 is equal to 5 which means that n is equal to positive 6. So going back to our question this now means that term 6 in the sequence is actually the number 32 divided by 243. Right, so this was a very good application of using the, the general formula for geometric sequences. So now let's look into geometric series. Right, so I'm going to remove this. Right, and now we're going to be discussing geometric series. Right, so Recall what is a series. Remember, a series is the sum of the terms in a sequence. So, in particular, remember that Sn denoted the sum to n terms, which means that this was basically term T1 being added to T2, and you continue adding up to and including term Tn. That is what it is. Now, in the case of geometric sequences, the sum to n terms can be determined by a formula, and that's what I'm going to provide you with now. This formula is actually divided into two cases. So the first case is when R is 
bigger than 1 and the second case is when r is less than 1. Right, so let's consider the first formula. So the formula for the sum to n terms of a geometric sequence where the ratio, the common ratio is bigger than 1 is given by the following. It's the first term in the sequence being multiplied to r raised to the power n minus 1 divided by r minus 1. In the second case, when the common ratio is less than 1, then the sum to n terms is given by the formula a, which is your first term, being multiplied to 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. And then you may ask, but how do we arrive at these formulas? So each of these formulas can be proven. So what I will do is I will provide the proofs of these formulas in an upcoming video. So for now, all I'm going to ask is that you believe that this is indeed the sum to n, form, the sum to n terms formula for a geometric series. So now that we have the formula, let's look at a basic application. So let's consider the following example. Right, so in this example, we have a series is equal to 728, meaning that we have the sum of the terms, the sum of the terms in some sequence where the first three terms are 2, 6, and 18, and it's continuing indefinitely. We don't yet know where it stops, but we know that the sum is 728. The question here is to determine the value of n. So essentially, what this question says is that this is the sum to n terms, and it is equal to 728. We want to find out at which term do you stop adding. So at which tn? will this sum terminate? And that's what we need to ask ourselves. But before we use one of the above formulas, we first have to investigate the terms in this series, meaning we have to investigate the sequence. So let's look at the sequence, pull out the terms. We have that the sequence in here is the terms 2, 6, and 18. So the question is, is this sequence a geometric one? So let's check, what are the ratios? So the first ratio, 6 divided by 2 is 3. The second ratio, 18 divided by 6 is also 3. So we do have a common ratio. The common ratio is r equals to 3. So now that we know this is a geometric sequence, we can use the, one of the above formulas to find the geometric series. The question is which one? r equals to 3 is clearly greater than 1. So this implies that the sum to n formula that we will be using is the first one, which is a being distributed into r to the n minus 1 divided by r minus 1. So now let's solve our problem. So we have sn equals to 728. a is the first term in the sequence. The first term is 2. So it's 2 being distributed into r to the n which is 3 to the n minus 1, divided by r minus 1, and r minus 1 is 3 minus 1, and we have that sn is equal to 728. So this is what we're solving for, and we are now solving for n. Right, so let's simplify as much as possible. So looking at the denominator in here, we've got 3 minus 1, which is 2. So we've got 2 distributed in to 3 to the n minus 1 divided by 2 equals to 728. All right. Observe that those terms cancel. And what we are left with is 3 to the n minus 1 equals to 728. So this means that 3 to the n is equal to 728 plus 1, which is 729. So once again, we have an exponential expression equal to a constant, and we have that we are solving for the exponent. We are solving for n. So remember the strategy at, that we had employed before. You need to look at your 729 and check if you can rewrite 729 as an exponential expression with base 3. So can we? And it turns out that we can because 729 is 3 raised to the power 6. So base 3, exponent 6. So 3 to the n is equal to 3 to the power 6. Again, we have like bases, so this implies that the exponents are equal. So that means n equals to 6. What does this mean for our question? It means that the sum 
to the first six terms. So all we had to do was sum t1, t2 up to t6. And by doing that, you will then obtain that your answer is 728. All right, so what we've done so far is we've looked at geometric series. However, we've, we've looked at the, the finite case. So this was finite geometric series because observe that we stop and terminate our sum at term Tn. So what happens if the sum did not terminate at Tn but continued indefinitely? In that case, what we're actually dealing with is called an infinite geometric series. Let's unpack this heading. Remember that infinite means that we have a list in a sequence that continues indefinitely. Infinite geometric means that the sequence is a geometric sequence and its list then continues indefinitely. And what do we mean by series? By series we call that we mean that we are summing the terms in the sequence. So therefore we are actually talking about obtaining the sum of the terms in an infinite geometric sequence. So now you may ask, given an infinite list of terms, can we always sum it? And the short answer to that question is no. However, we can obtain we can obtain the sum if the series, meaning the sum of the, the terms in the sequence, is convergent. So the question is now, what does convergent mean? What does it mean for the series to be called convergent? So for that, let me give you a definition. Right, so an infinite... geometric series, which is what we are working with, is called convergent if the following is satisfied. So what are the conditions that we are referring to? The first condition is that the common ratio from our geometric sequence must be strictly between negative 1 and positive 1. And the second condition is that the common ratio must not be equal to 0. So if we have a geometric sequence whose common ratio satisfies these two terms, sorry, these two conditions, then we have that the series is convergent. Right, so that is a very important definition. So if we have an infinite geometric series that is convergent, it means we can now determine its sum. So the question is, how, what is the formula for the sum? Right, so it turns out that the sum of the terms in a convergent geometric, well we're working with infinite, with a convergent infinite geometric sequence is given by the following formula. So let's take a note of that. Remember if we're working with a geom infinite geometric sequence it means we have an unending list of terms. So we're summing all of the terms indefinitely, indefinitely, which means we are summing to infinity. So this is denoted by S subscript infinity and the formula for the sum to infinity, meaning all of the terms in your infinite geometric sequence, is given by A, which is the first term in your geometric sequence, divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So this formula is extremely important. Let's consider an example. So suppose I had given you the following series. 1 plus a half plus 1 quarter plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth and it continues indefinitely. That's what's happening and I want to know what is the sum of all of the terms in here such that these terms are satisfying a specific condition, right? So it's satisfying the specific relationship between them. Right, so firstly, let's tackle the question. So we know this is a series, so therefore it is the sum of the terms from a sequence. So let's write down the sequence. So the terms in the sequence are 
one half quarter one eighth and one sixteenth that's what we have but I'm just going to write down the first three terms because that's all that I need to work with right so the question is is the sequence a geometric one so all we have to do is check for the common ratio so let's let's determine what is the ratio between the first two terms it's a half divided by one which is half the ratio between the second two terms is a quarter divided by half which is also a half so we know that we are summing the terms in a sequence that is a geometric one so we're working with an infinite geometric sequence the question is is the series going to be convergent and that means we now have to check that these two conditions are satisfied so we have that r equals to half and half is clearly not zero and in addition we also know that r equals to half is certainly sandwiched between negative one and positive one so that means that this series is certainly convergent so when we are talking about the sum of all of the terms in this infinite geometric sequence we are actually talking about calculating the sum to infinity so that means that all we need to do is use our formula so the sum to infinity is a divided by 1 minus r a in this case is 1 it's the first term in the sequence and 1 minus r is 1 minus a half which is 1 divided by half and 1 divided by half is 2 so what does this now mean? Essentially, this 2 represents the sum of all of the terms in this infinite list. And to me, that's quite fascinating because an infinite list, the sum of all of those terms only equaled to 2. So on that bombshell, that is where I'm going to end this video lecture.